Hi booktube, Lynette here and today's video is going to be a book tag and I'm going to do the fantasy character tropes tag. So I'm going to leave the questions down below. If you want to have a go at this yourself then please do um, and tag me in it to let me know that you've done it. The first question is the chosen one trope, a book that you recommend to everyone and no prizes for guessing, it's The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. This is my all-time favourite book. Um, it's been a firm favourite since I was 10. I've talked about it in numerous videos uh, on this channel. Um, but yes, I recommend it to everybody. Um, if you want to get started in fantasy or if you have a youngster that you want to get started in fantasy, then definitely hand them a copy of The Hobbit. Question number two is The Secret Air Trope. And this is a book that surprised you or that turned out to be more than you thought it would be. And for this, I have picked Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. I read this back in December last year and I read it because it was all over YouTube at the start of last year. And someone whose recommendations I trust very much, Jess McGlynn, she had read it. She had absolutely loved it. And yeah, I am. Um, this was not a book that I would normally pick up. It is not a book that I would normally pick up. It's more of a literary um historical fiction it's set in the 1960s in america and it's about a young girl kaya who is living in the backwaters on her own and she's shunned by the nearby town um it's also a dual timeline there is a murder that happens a bit later on and it's working out who the killer is as well and this book this book really affected me um more than i thought it would I really fell for Kaya um, as a character and I can't really explain why. All I know is that all the way through the book I was rooting for her. I wanted her to get, um, get what she deserved out of life because she deserved more than the lot that she'd been given and it made me cry, it made me smile, um, it had moments that really i wanted to to the person that gets murdered yeah it was one of those few times when you actually think that that person deserves it really deserved what was coming to them um so yes so this one really did surprise me and it was quite a pleasant surprise as well question number three is the evil overlord a book that you think was poorly executed or a book that maybe didn't quite hit the mark for you I'm going to go with two fantasy series and this is going to be unpopular. A Song of Ice and Fire and The Witcher. I've read the first short story collection and half of the second short story collection of The Witcher series. I've got halfway through and I've decided that I'm not going to read anymore. Um, I just couldn't get on board with the world. I couldn't get on board with the series and I've unhauled the entire series i've deleted them from my kindle it's one of the few times when i've done that i don't normally like to do that when i've bought a full series it's very rare i actually buy a full series before i even know that i'm going to read it um so i am a little annoyed with myself for that um but yeah i just i just couldn't and even i had that much apathy about it that I've not even bothered to try the TV series, even though there is masses of hype about the TV series as well. Um, as far as A Song of Ice and Fire goes, I've read the first two books. So I've read uh, A Game of Thrones and I've read A Clash of Kings. A Clash of Kings took me four attempts to finish. For me, there are too many characters. There is too much, uh, too many storylines. There is just too much. For me to take in as a story um and i i'm not bothered by large fantasy books they, they, it's not the size of them that bothers me um it's just that there is so much going on that i don't feel i can keep the thread of it all i watched the tv series and i loved the tv series absolutely enjoyed it apart from the last one i have to say i agree with everybody that series uh did not do the did not do the whole thing any justice at all and 
that is also my argument for why TV series and film adaptations should not be made until the entire series has been published because you miss things and you get things wrong and you don't have the richness of the storytelling uh, to help back up your own storytelling but I digress yes A Song of Ice and Fire again it's one that I don't actually I just I can't be doing with it it's just too much for me Question number four is The Reluctant Hero, a book or series that you're not sure you actually want to read. And I'm going to say Leviathan Wakes by James S.A. Corey. Now, I picked this up when I was in the bookshop on a whim. Um, I haven't seen many people talk about it on YouTube. Haven't, don't ever see it posted on Instagram. Um, I know it was made into a TV series for Amazon called The Expanse. Is science fiction. Science fiction isn't really a genre that I dabble in very, very often. Um, I picked it up because it sounds interesting, um, but I'm not sure that I'm ever going to read it. So, yeah, I think it's one that's sat on my shelves until maybe a readathon gives me a prompt that it fits really, really well um, and that I've got time to read such a chunky book because it is what four five hundred pages of story um yep over 500 pages so yeah i'm just not sure and it there is a big series out i'm not intimidated by big series um i've got robin hobb and i've got the wheel of time i'm not intimidated by long series um but yeah i just don't know that i'm ever going to get around to it question number five is the lucky novice and that is a book that was a great debut and I am going to put up the only romance novel in this um, tag, and that is Driven by Kay Bromberg. This was the very first book that Kay Bromberg ever published, and I love it. It blew me away. It's one of the very, very few books that has made me want to throw my Kindle across the room. It has a cliffhanger. Um, it's well written. There is an excellent romance between the two main characters, uh, Riley and Colton. And it's recently been turned into a series by a company called Passion Flicks. And it's one that I've read and reread and reread. And I never get tired of reading it. It takes me by surprise every time I get to the cliffhanger. I know it's coming and it still punches a hole in my gut. Um, so this is one of the favourite debuts that I have ever read and I read it when it first came out as well so I had the long wait for the second book to come out um, and yeah it's one I never shy away from reading and rereading. Question number six is The Mentor, a book that is formative to your life? I can't really come up with any that are formative to my life. Formative to my reading, yes. So as mentioned earlier, uh, The Hobbit definitely started a lifelong love of fantasy novels um and started this never looked back um and then i don't like these books anymore but i have to say the 50 shades of gray books uh if i hadn't picked those up i probably wouldn't have read quite so much in the way of romance over the last 10 years as i have uh, they were some of the very first romance books I picked up um, in my early 30s. And um, yeah, yeah, so they've been formative to my reading in a way. Question number seven is Animal Companion. And this is a book that broke your heart or a book that makes you smile. There are lots of books that make me smile. There are some books that break my heart. But as soon as I saw what this question was, my first first response wasn't a book but it was an author and that was robin hobb uh, if you've read robin hobb you know that she can rip your heart out tear it to shreds and put it back together again um although she doesn't tend to put it back together again i have picked i decided i wanted to pick just one and the one that i've picked is fall's errand which is the first book in the tawny man trilogy there is a much anticipated death in this book that you know is coming through the whole book um and it just it just broke me i sobbed for the last quarter of this book um but also uh fool's fate as well um i knew i couldn't pick just one of her books uh fool's fate as well which is the final book in the series 
I pretty much sold my entire way through this book. Um, I absolutely, absolutely love Robin Hobb's writing. She is my favourite all-time fantasy author. Um, there haven't been any new releases from her for a while. Um, and it would be really sad if there weren't any more releases from her uh, ever again. Because I just adore her writing. Um, and I'd love more. But I know she's not a spring chicken anymore. So, yes, I think... I think at the point that there is no more Robin Hobb writing in the world will be a very sad day indeed. So, but her books are very, very sad and they do break your heart. Okay, so that was the fantasy character trope tag. Um, like I say, questions down below. Give it a go yourself if you want to. I hope you do. Let me know if you do so I can come along and watch the uh, video as well. And if you've enjoyed this video, then please like and subscribe. And I put videos up every single Monday at 6.30pm UK time. And I'll see you all again in the next one. Bye.